Happy Camper Radio starts in three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Good to be back with you again. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And this is the Happy Camper Radio Show. Good to have you along with us. On the program today, I've got a very interesting topic for you, something we haven't talked about in a long time. When we plan for a camping trip, we've got a lot on our plate. It is so very important for each and every one of us to remember our comfort and our relaxation is part of it all. And that means when we bed down at night underneath the stars, we want to have the most comfortable sleep imaginable. Is it time to upgrade your sleeping bag? Is it time to replace it? Is it old and worn out? Sleeping bags, like just about any piece of camping equipment you have, will last a very long time as long as you take good care of it. I had a sleeping bag that lasted me for many, many years, and it was recently time for me to upgrade. I'll tell you what I bought and why I am going to be using this particular type of sleeping bag from now until eternity. I don't think I'm going to be buying another one anytime down the road. It's going to be very comforting for me. I'm going to really enjoy it when I get out and relax beneath the stars like many, many of our fellow listeners will be doing. Sleeping bag replacement, we're going to be talking about it on today's edition of Happy Camper Radio. You can get in touch with us by calling 404-537-2267. That's 404-537-CAMP. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker, add us to Circles on Google+, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to www.happycamperradio.com. You'll find all of our social media icons over on the right-hand side of the page. You click on any one of them, you'll connect up with us. Check out the studio tour, see what we've got going on. Always something new to add in the studio. I'm going to be taking some pictures, in fact, this upcoming weekend, and hopefully adding them and updating the website momentarily. you got to check out some of this, folks. It's almost like my man cave. I do spend a lot of time here in the studio and I'm really relaxed when I'm here. It's almost like being on a camping trip. No kidding. But hey, if you want to check out any one of our previous episodes, there's one easy way to do that. If you go to our homepage, happycamperradio.com, in the upper right-hand corner on the toolbar, you're going to see a little tab there. It says podcast episodes. You can go back all the way from day one when we started podcasting more than three years ago. There's always something new here at Happy Camper Radio. You can find us in the iTunes Store on Podbean, Myra Guide, Stitcher, the BlackBerry Podcast Directory, iHeartRadio, and just yesterday, I've got some very exciting news. We were just added to the playlist on Google Play Music. Yes! I am thrilled about that. Our listeners from all over the world have many, many choices now. They have many ways to connect up with Happy Camper Radio. In fact, I just added the icons on the homepage. If you want to go there right now, happycamperradio.com, you'll see that we got iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, Stitcher, and a whole host of others. So you can connect up with us any way, anytime you want to. So stick around. We're going to have some more information about that later on. I want to go to the shout-out window right now and recognize some uh, folks who signed up with us this past week on social media. We definitely want to take a moment to recognize them. First of all, to Kelly Kendall Wright of Dawsonville, Georgia, Greg Kent of Ballground, Georgia. They both like us on Facebook. Chris Rosinski of Mobile, Alabama. Janeth Tomes. Martino Carzola. The fine folks at Wizard Works Interactive Water Park Builder in Albany, New York. Vacationland Campground in Sandy Lake, Pennsylvania. The folks at Recreational Vehicle Accessories in Denver, Colorado. And finally, to Go Camping PA in Pennsylvania. They're all following us on Twitter. Thank you so very much. Glad to have you on board, each and every one of you. And more importantly, thank you for being a part of this great Happy Camper Radio family. Would you like to join me on the program? Get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. I'm always up for some great conversation. If you want to be on the show, 
That's the way to reach me. Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. All right, let's talk about the sleeping bags, folks. When I go camping, and I'm sure most of you who have been camping for a number of years feel the same way, your rest and relaxation is so very important, especially if you have a young family. Because number one, you're going to be doing all the planning. You're going to be doing all the work. That includes going out and buying the groceries, setting up camp, hauling all the gear out there, getting everything set up. And once you do that, staying in touch and staying on top of the kids and all of that build up energy they have is going to wear you out. So at the end of the day, you definitely want to make sure that you take the very best possible time and relaxation you can and get the rest that you need because you're going to have to take on the day when you first get up in the morning. So you want to make sure the rest and relaxation you get each and every night you are sleeping beneath the stars is the best possible sleep you can get. Has your sleeping bag outlived its age? Is it time to buy a new one? These are questions we may ask ourselves from time to time. One of the things I have always talked about in the world of camping is when you make an investment, when you make the conscientious decision that you're going to include camping as part of your life, your gear is going to last you a number of years, and it's a very inexpensive investment to make. The gear that I have, I bought more than 20 years ago, and I use most of it to this very day. Not very often do I have to go out and buy a lot of expensive stuff. Yeah, there's going to be some needs for, you know, small things here and there, but then that, that comes along with the, with the territory. You're going to be buying a little thing. You're going to be uh, replenishing your propane tanks, or if you're carrying liquid fuel, your white gas, you know, things like that. You're going to you're going to have to go ahead and you know buy them as you need them. But for the most part, when you buy camping equipment, unless you decide you want to have something better, unless you decide you want to upgrade, if there's something out there you just gotta have, you're not going to have to spend a lot of money doing that. Your sleeping bag, I'll give you an example here. The one I got, like I said, I bought more than 20 years ago and it served its purpose. In fact, I bought two of them and they've lasted me a very long time. Why? Because my camping equipment, I take very good care of it. You don't wanna toss it in a closet. You don't wanna leave it in there and be climbing over top of it to get to other stuff. And you wanna have everything bagged up, boxed up, crated up so you have it, I'm talking if you're a primitive camper now. So everything is there, everything is in place, and everything will be available to you for your next camping trip. Some of these camping trips we talk about are spread apart throughout the year uh, over a course of several months. And if we box our stuff up and put it away in the closet, say maybe in November, we may not get it out again until March or April. So it's going to be in there for a while. And as long as it's there, as long as it's not getting kicked around or beat up or pushed around or things like that, it's going to be in the same condition and in the same place it was when you stored it away. Proper care of your camping equipment is so very important, folks. I cannot express that enough. Now, whether you're replacing your existing camping equipment, uh, such as your sleeping bag, or if you're camping for the very first time, again, your comfort should be the greatest consideration in deciding what type of sleeping bag you're going to buy. One of the things you may wanna ask, how long do they last? I just mentioned my sleeping bag I bought about 20 years ago, maybe a little more than that. In fact, I'll tell you when I bought it. It was in the year 1996. I use them every single year. Sometimes I take in more camping trips than others, but the camping equipment, like I say, it's a relatively inexpensive, and as long as you take care of it, it's going to last. When I bought these sleeping bags, I didn't invest a whole ton of money in them. In fact, I bought them at our local Walmart store, which is still in existence down the road, about three miles. These sleeping bags, they're Coleman sleeping bags, they cost me about $20 each. They have a flannel lining to them, which provides me adequate warmth and comfort. And if you've camped for a number of years, you're going to know when it's time to replace them. 
the sleeping bags that I have, one of them I recently decided, well, I think it's time that I retire this sleeping bag. Uh, it served its purpose over the years. The other one is still in pretty good condition. Now, no, I do not use two sleeping bags when I go camping. Why do I have two? Well, back in my day, I had, you know, one of my youngsters would go camping with me from time to time, so I had a sleeping bag for her. I also kept it on hand in case one of my relatives decided to come down south and visit from up north, and we decided to take in a camping trip. And if my relative flew down here, then, of course, he or she's not going to have a sleeping bag to go camping with. So I've got to have that extra one on hand. So one of these sleeping bags are still in pretty good shape, but the other one, uh, even though I could have stretched it out maybe for another three or four or five years, I decided it was time to go ahead and make a change. I didn't buy the exact type of sleeping bag. I got something bigger. I got something better, something a little more expensive. But I expect this particular sleeping bag that I just bought, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a little bit, that's going to last me probably from now until, who knows, when the cows come home. When you're deciding to buy a sleeping bag, there are some types of sleeping bags you're going to be looking at and deciding which one is best for you. Let's take a look at some of the sleeping bags that you will come across. The most popular sleeping bag is a rectangular sleeping bag. It has a rectangular shape. You get inside, you zip it up, you go to sleep. Hopefully, it's going to provide you all the comfort you need to take on the next day. There are sleeping bags that are shaped like a mummy. These mummy-shaped sleeping bags, I know you've seen them. They're oversized. There's queen size. There's even smaller sizes for the ladies. Don't be surprised if you go into a camping supply store where they've got a lot of equipment on hand and you're looking through the sleeping bags, you may find one that's suitable for the ladies. I found them that way online, too. There are kids' sleeping bags. They've got cartoon characters or their superhero imprinted on them. The kids love those. You even have some of the ones today that have extra features on them, such as a draft tube along the zipper, which keeps the heat in. And there are some that come with these hoods that actually you pull the hood over top of your head. If you're a cold-weather camper, that would come in very handy, I would think. There's many, many choices available out there, and you've got to look and decide which one is going to be suitable for you. Because again, when you're sleeping, when you are camping, when you are out for the night, and you're getting eight hours plus sleep, I hope you're going to be doing a little more than that. Because you want to set all the worries, all the problems that you've been going through, everything aside, and at the end of the day, when you put out the fire and you climb in your sleeping bag, you want to afford yourself the best possible sleep available. Where can you buy a sleeping bag? If you have a local Walmart store and you're satisfied with that, you can buy one there. I prefer shopping at a store that specializes in camping, and I'll tell you why. Even though you're going to probably spend a little more money than you would, say, at your local Walmart store or maybe even buying something online, Here's the thing. You're going to find most of the products, if not all of the products, on display right there in front of you. I think that's so very important. Now, some stores, the camping stores that we have in our area, I went in there recently when I decided to buy a sleeping bag. And I kind of suspected they did not carry the type of sleeping bag I was looking for, but I wanted to shop around. I wanted to browse around and see what they had. Many stores that specialize in outdoors will have hanging displays. And this is where they have the sleeping bag hanging from top to bottom. And you actually get to put your hand on the sleeping bag. You get the feel of the sleeping bag. You get to visualize what it would be like if you were inside that sleeping bag. You can unzip it while it's hanging up. You can put your hand in there. You can get the feel of it. And I think that is so very important before you buy. If you buy a sleeping bag and you have no earthly idea what you're getting and you buy it online, well, you're going to be stuck with it when it gets to the house. And if it's something you do not like or do not need, you're going to make the decision, well, do I want to keep it or do I want to send it on back? And then in most cases, you're going to have to pay return shipping and all that stuff. But that's just the way it goes. If you want to get a feel of what you may 
decide to buy and what you may be sleeping in for your next camping trip. You may want to go to a store in your area that specializes in camping or specializes in the outdoors. Some of the stores will not have hanging displays, not all of them. You may go into a store and find the camping supply aisle where all the sleeping bags are, and every one of them are bagged up. They're packaged, they're boxed, and you're going to buy whatever is in that box or in that bag, and you're going to look at the box and see, well, here's what the sleeping bag looks like, here's the dimensions, here's all the, the descriptions that they have to provide, and make a decision for yourself if that's the type of sleeping bag you want. But if it were up to me, and I was deciding I'm going to go with a rectangular type sleeping bag or a mummy type sleeping bag, I think I probably would go to a camping supply store where I could actually get the feel of it and decide that way that, yeah, okay, this is the sleeping bag I want. There is nothing wrong with putting your hand on a product and getting the feel of it before deciding to buy. So, you know, you got to make the decision for yourself. As there's a lot of choices to be made out there. And you can get them, um, like I say, online. You can get them in the stores and whatever works for you. The problem is, if you're living in a rural area, you may not have the convenience of driving down the road to, say, maybe your Gander Mountain Store or your, your Academy Sports that specialize in a lot of outdoor camping equipment. You know, you may have to drive several, several miles, so it, it may be way out of the way, and you may have to either go to your local Walmart store or buy something online. I understand that. It, it would be nice if we had stores that specialize in camping just around every corner, like where we live here in the South, but that's not always going to be the case. But whatever you decide you're going to buy, you want to afford yourself the best possible sleep available to you. Proper care and storage is very important, whatever you decide to buy. Sleeping bags should always be stored away when they're not in use. If you're not camping and you come on home from your camping trip, your sleeping bag should already be zipped up in the storage bag that came with it, and it should be stored away until your next camping trip. You should not be using it for everyday use. If you do that, you're going to cut short the life of your equipment. I know when you get your sleeping bag, regardless of when you buy it, whether you buy it in a store or you buy it online, chances are you're going to want to bring it on home, lay it out on your bed, and get the feel of it by sleeping in it for the first night. Nothing wrong with that at all. But after that, when you use it for camping, that's all it should be used for. It should be stored away in that bag. Otherwise, it's going to become worn. It's going to become torn up. If you have pets, if you got, you know, they're going to be clawing all over it and biting on it. You don't want that. Now, when you get some of these sleeping bags that have the plastic storage bags, this was the case in point with the Coleman sleeping bags that I bought several years ago. They came in very durable plastic bags. And unfortunately, over time, that plastic would tear and it had to be thrown out. If you run into a situation like this, whatever the case may be, whether you have a, an elastic bag or a plastic bag or a cloth cut type of bag, I don't care. If it gets worn out, if it gets beat up, and it's time to get rid of that storage bag, then I would recommend taking a heavy-duty plastic garbage bag and putting your sleeping bag in that and using a twisty tie and tie it up. This way, it's going to be protected from the elements not only in travel to your camping destination, but in the storage closet or you know, any, anywhere else around the house that you may be storing your, your, um, your camping equipment. I would avoid storing your sleeping bag in the garage or in a storage shed. Here at the house, I have a storage closet in my garage, and that's where I store all of my camping equipment, and I still have plenty of room in there for other stuff. You know, I, even though I have a lot of gear that I carry with me that loads up the back of my eight-foot pickup truck, I still have room in that closet that I could put other things. But my sleeping bags... I separate those and I put them in a storage closet inside my house. I feel a little more comfortable with them being indoors in a enclosed environment inside the house than out there in the garage. I don't know. It, it, probably nothing would happen to it. There probably wouldn't be any changes, but I feel more comfortable with my sleeping bag inside the house. 
They're going to need washed occasionally, too. I would follow the manufacturer's recommendation for cleaning. There's usually a tag that's going to be attached with detailed instructions on how to wash and clean your sleeping bags. Some sleeping bags may not be machine washable. They're usually pretty big. And if you have a washer and dryer like I have at the house, and I didn't spend a, a ton of money when I bought my washer and dryer, my sleeping bags are not going to get properly cleaned if I put them in the washing machine I have here at the house. You may have to take your sleeping bags to your local dry cleaner and have it cleaned that way. But every now and then, depending upon how much you use your sleeping bag and how much camping you take in, it may be required of you to take it to a local dry cleaner to get it cleaned. So get that done. The more you take care of your gear, especially your sleeping bag, the longer it's going to last. All right, the sleeping bag I bought for 2017. Let me get right into this and I'll tell you what I bought and why I bought it. Over the course of several years, I have slept in many different outdoor environments. I've slept on the tent floor. I've slept on the living room floor at home in a sleeping bag. I've slept on a cot and I've slept on an air mattress. I've always talked about the importance of elevating yourself off the tent floor. And regardless of what type of sleeping bag you're in, you're going to get your best sleep available when there is something separating from your sleeping bag from the ground floor. The decision to upgrade with this particular sleeping bag I bought came when I purchased this past fall a queen size air mattress. No, I'm not into glamping. I don't think about glamping. And I don't consider the fact that I bought a queen sized air mattress for my tent that I am now a glamper. I am not. I'm a tall guy. I love to toss and turn at night. I require a lot of room. I stretch. I roll around. I can't do that very well inside a rectangular sleeping bag, even though I slept in one for many, many years, especially on a cot. You, you don't get that type of relaxation. Some people sleep very soundly and peacefully, and they don't move the entire night. I wish I could do that. That's just not me. When I wake up in the middle of the night or if I wake up early in the morning, whatever the case may be, covers are stretched out everywhere. And you wonder, wow, who slept in here tonight? But I like to roll around, so yes, I need to have that extra room. I went and purchased myself a Teton Sports Mammoth sleeping bag. This sleeping bag runs about $120. I haven't used it yet. It's still in the bag. And no, I have not opened it up and stretched it across my bed and slept in it for the first night. I am going to wait until I go on my next camping trip, which is not too far down the road, and I'm going to enjoy the time in that sleeping bag when I'm out beneath the stars. Of course, it comes in its own carrying case. Um, it's warm. It's polyester flannel. It has the lining uh, retains your body heat, which I think is so very important. It has a temperature rating of negative 18 degrees Celsius and zero degree Fahrenheit. It's uh, 16 and a half pounds. It's definitely not the type of a sleeping bag that you want to take backpacking. <laughs> you don't want to carry that kind of load with you. And yes, I shop for it online because like I mentioned here a little bit ago, when I went into the camping supply store, I didn't expect to find a queen size sleeping bag. But I did take a look at what they had available there because I like to see what's out in the market today. The type of sleeping bag I bought 20 years ago, the Coleman sleeping bag, I couldn't find them today in the Walmart store. I don't think they even make these type anymore. I could be mistaken, but when I looked around, anytime I go shopping and there's a camping supply aisle, I walk around and see what they have and I haven't seen one of these sleeping bags in a very, very long time. One, like I say, is wore out. The other one, yeah, I'm going to hold on to that one here because I never know when I'm going to use it again. After today, I don't think I'm going to be buying another sleeping bag because this one here is, is it's going to last me a long time. It's going to last me from now until eternity. That's the way I look at it. When you buy a sleeping bag, you also want to consider the climate. Some of these things you may not think about whenever you're going out to purchase a sleeping bag, whether you're buying a new one or going out to replace one. You just may buy one and say, oh, hey, this is going to work. But you should be considering all these things because, again, it's an investment. Consider the climate. 
Many don't consider the temperature ratings. When you go camping, you're going to have warm nights. You're going to have cold nights. You can get a good night's sleep these days for about a $30 investment. Again, the ones I bought at Walmart, they kept me as comfortable as I could possibly be all of these years. So I didn't sink a whole lot of money for that comfort. I just didn't have to. Like anything these days, like I said, you can purchase online. If you're camping in the spring and summer, don't spend a fortune. You don't have to. It's not necessary. But if you want to have good equipment, if you want to have name brand, if you want to have something that you think is better than what you had before, and you don't mind spending that extra money, go for it. Take care of whatever you have. Even if you buy a, a sleeping bag that doesn't have um, a temperature rating, say, down to zero, if you're camping and you carry a tent heater with you, that heat inside that tent is going to compensate for what you may lose in that sleeping bag should you not carry a tent heater with you. Anytime you buy camping equipment, you want to think through your purchase very, very carefully. When you buy a lantern, when you buy a stove, whatever you may be buying, you take the time to think about what you want, what you need, what is going to work for you. This same type of consideration should be put into your sleeping equipment, whether it be your cot, your air mattress, and especially your sleeping bag, because that's where you're going to get your best possible sleep anytime that you're out sleeping beneath the stars. Get a good sleeping bag, get the proper rest you need, and be ready to take on the day each and every time you go camping, especially if you've got the kids out there with you. It's time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. And this week, we are going to go to the state of Mississippi to the Winton Park Campground operated by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It's a great campground, and it's open all the way through Thursday, February 23rd of 2017. All right, the Winton Park Campground attracts thousands of outdoor enthusiasts for picnicking, fishing, and swimming on the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway. Easy access to three boat docks, nature trails, and a sandy swimming beach with a gazebo overlooking the waterway, make Witten Park a welcoming destination for campers. This time of year in the state of Mississippi, I don't know what the, the weather is like down there right now, but I don't think I'd want to be doing any swimming right at this particular moment, even though I might bring my swim trunks with me. Who knows? <laughs> the Tennessee Tom Bibby River extends 234 miles from the Tennessee River to the junction of the Tom Bigby River in Alabama. It's a man-made waterway, and it connects the nation's midsection of commercial water transportation with the Gulf of Mexico. Anglers can try their luck on the fishing dock or go offshore in search of bass or crappie. Hikers can enjoy the many nature trails around the area which weave through the wooded wildlife habitats. The campground offers 60 sites with electric and water hookups, the three camp loops provide easy access to playgrounds, laundry facilities, and showers. Check out all their activities and amenities right there on their homepage. Also remember, don't move firewood. Protect your forest from those tree-killing pests by buying your firewood locally and burning it locally on site. For more information, go to don'tmovefirewood.org or check out the link on happycamperradio.com. A great place to go camping in the state of Mississippi. If you're planning a trip out there or you live in the area, consider Witten Park. It's our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. And of course, if you have a campground that you would like for us to feature on the program, get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. Make sure you include a link to the campground website. Well, folks, that's about all the time I have for today's show. It's always a pleasure getting together with you and talking about camping. Anytime we talk about the outdoors, I feel good, and I'm sure you do too. Remember, friends, every pet deserves a loving home. Do exactly like I did. Visit your local shelter and adopt a pet today. You can find us online anytime at www.happycamperradio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. Add us to circles on Google+. And now subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Huber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And yes, my friends... I'm going to do my very best to make a happy camper out of you. Talk to you again real soon. 
You're listening to Happy Camper Radio.